Hi guys, so the last that we saw this project, I was beginning on the tread of the boot. I have since completed that. Um, I just went ahead and uh, got it done rather than make a video uh, because it was just a long, tedious process that was highly repetitive. Just, you know, doing each one of these things here. And, um, you know, just it just would have been a long time lapse. And honestly, it's probably not worth the time. So I just went ahead and did it. Um, and this is what we have here. Final poly count is about 7,600 faces. Um, it's not bad. Um, I did not, as you can see, like say here, you see that I didn't do any any beveling on these uh treads it's just because i figured if i did that you know the poly counts would start to get ridiculous um plus it's the underside of a shoe so you're not really going to be seeing this a lot if if at all and so there's no point just putting all that extra poly count in there for no reason uh if i do smooth it you can see that it smooths out okay I mean, they're a little soft, you know, if I want them to be a little uh, tighter, then I'd have to bevel them. I, th I think it's fine. This is one one uh, iteration of smooth. I think it's fine for what it is. Um, just the underside of a shoe, no big deal. The other thing is, once I, once I get done with the shoe, I'm going to then reproject. I'm going to get, I'm going to create a normal map using the original scan and you can see how much tighter some of these edges are and when you do that with, and when you create the normal map what it's going to do is allow my edges to look a lot tighter than they are so i don't need that extra those extra uh, edges and, and polygons in there i can just get most of that from the normal map um, and then the normal map will be good for things like the stitching here I can get some of that. We'll see how we'll, we'll see how that looks. Um, if it's you know, I mean, you look at it; it's not that really high resolution. So, if it doesn't look good, we can always do it in ZBrush and get a much much uh, nicer looking uh, normal map going. But uh, we'll we'll try. We'll see if this stitching comes through. Then I'll keep it. If not, I'll just uh, go put it in in ZBrush and then make a normal map there. But for the tread, I think projecting a normal map from this tread will be fine. Uh, we got a few few different artifacts like some of this stuff in here. Maybe I'll go through and delete some of these polygons before I try to run the normal map. Okay, so that is the plan. Um, now, what we have here, if I smooth this, this is what we have here. You'll see that the these sort of connection areas here between the different panels they're kind of soft so what I've what I've started to do as you can see on this side I sort of tightened those up made them a little more defined um, and that just looks looks better to me I did the same on the the toe cap here so as you can see how much softer this is you just gotta go in and um, tighten that up I did the same thing up here I just got it nice and tightened up and the back as well. I got to do the same thing up here. The other thing I also did was I started to actually cut holes in the mesh here for the laces. So I've done most of them. I got two more to do, so we'll we'll go through that. And uh and then at some point we're going to continue to do the tongue. Um Obviously, the tongue has to slide in underneath these sort of lace uh, holes here. So it's going to get to a point where we, have, where we have to sort of diverge from the original scan just to get things to work well for animation. Um, so that's that's the plan. Then, of course, we have to do something about the inside. Um, remember that he's going to, you know, have his leg in here. So we don't necessarily know. We don't need to model the inside of the boot, obviously. We're just going to model downward just enough for when we put his leg in there that it uh, 
hides you know the fact that it's not completely finished okay so we have uh we're, we're getting there we just got uh we just have to do some detailing and so on and so forth so let's go ahead let's start right here okay i just want to tighten this up again if i smooth it you'll see that it's 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 not as tight as i might like so i'm just going to figure out which edges so that those edges there and we can go ahead and go up here and around here and I'm just double clicking to select and then you can see that this one is actually wrong right here so I'm going to deselect this and honestly, I probably should have done this a little bit better. I should have cut through here. So uh, what I'm going to do is go to multi-cut. Let's see if I can just make this go this way. And I need to turn off my edge flow on the multi-cut. Edge flow tries to maintain the curvature of the surface. I don't need that right now, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh... So let me undo my cut here and then do it again. This is just going to allow me to have an edge edge flow that way. And then maybe I can just adjust some of this stuff in here. Um, I don't want to move stuff around too much because then I might pull it off of the, um, the scan too much which may adversely affect our normal map creation. So we need to just be careful how much we start to pull this off. Because remember, all these points up to this this stage here have been modeled using Quadraw, which will snap them to the actual surface. So if we start pulling them off too far, they may not line up very well for the normal map. So we just need to be careful of that. Um, trying to think, should I leave this triangle here or do I want to try to fix that? You know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to target weld these up here. And uh, yeah, target weld is kind of annoying in that if you have a vertex selected like I do right here, and then if you go and try to weld to completely separate vertices you'll see that that selected one gets welded down there now yeah this then there's no there's there's no real settings in in the tool so if you're going to use target weld just make sure that you deselect anything that might be selected before you start otherwise it's going to do some funny things that you don't want So I'm just going to merge these. I think that will be good. And that will reduce my poly count just a bit. All right. Let's go with that. Okay, so now I need to reselect. So now we have our edge loops going where we want them. Um, now all this stuff is going to have to be adjusted as we continue to model um, some of these polygons because I need this sort of wrap into the shoe so go around and back and some of these polygons here don't quite work with that but we'll get there as we go so just go ahead and start selecting some of these polygons here and because all this stuff is connected we're just going to go ahead and do them all at once all the way there and there's going to be some cleanup to do don't worry about it too much we just want to get the main oops Something got selected here. 
So deselect that. And just double click where you can. And this, well, we need this edge loop here. So we can connect that. Let's try that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are really details that are small details that you'll never, unless you're for some reason real close to that boot, you're never going to know. All right. So let's then run a bevel. And we want to keep it nice and tight, maybe 0.75. And what I like to do is give it two segments so that I have that uh, center edge loop. Let's make this one. How about that? Okay, so as you can see, it's gone around and done it for all those polygons there. So let's go into smooth and see what we're getting here. So you can see how much nice and cleaner and crisper that is. That's what we want. Now here, it's kind of loose here because this is back here when it should be sort of up there like that. Okay, so that looks a lot better to me. Uh, this area right here, we need to do some work on. Let me see how I did it back here. Well, you know what? I only used two here. I may actually go back in and add a third edge loops down the center. And the reason I do this is because thinking about UVs, this shoe has very well-defined sort of panels. Like this toe cap here, that will be UV'd by itself. This here all the way around through to there will be UV'd by itself this right here all the way around that'll be uv'd by itself so these are all very well defined sort of uv shells and the nice thing about when you select the polygons that you're going to uv is you can come here and then where this bevel is having that segment in there that third edge loop in there makes it so that my uv edges are really tight so one UV shell is going to come up to the center here, and one UV shell is going to come up to the center from here. And each UV shell is going to have a really tight edge at its borders. It's going to have these two, this this uh, really thin poly uh, loop here at the border edges, which is going to hold my detail a lot better. So I should have done that on the other side. I'm, I'm probably, you know, I did it here... Oh, it seemed to have stopped there. Um, so I just I've got some cleanup to do here. So, for example, I'm going to cut to here. So that's going to hold UVs very nicely. So I, I just need to do some of these other ones. So we'll be back for that later. Okay, so we've defined this pretty well. Now let's do some of that cleanup up here. Um, so what's happening here is that you see how I'm sort of losing my detail there. So we need to go in and see what we can do about that. I might just take these polygons here and shift them this way and see what that gave me. Eh, a little bit. Um, Select these. Let's move them down here. I'm hoping that I'm not pulling this off too much from the scan, but I think we'll be all right. Getting a little bit better. Um, you know, that might be fine. I don't want to waste too much time there. Um, now the... Uh, yeah, no, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Um... Again, I'm just going to move this down here. 
just to give me a little bit more definition. Yeah, that's looking better. Uh, over here as well. Let's see. Okay, so now I have a lot of weirdness going on here. So I'm just going to move these around here just to see what I'm dealing with. Okay, so we have a weird area right in here. And that's created a pretty serious end gun right there. So let's see how we can fix this. So again, I'm going to deselect everything. Then I'm going to go to my target weld. And let's close that. Um, yeah, this is kind of tough here. Um, let me think here. So if I maybe not. Uh, to get rid of this. Yeah, I don't want to run anything else through here because you're going to, what that's going to do is going to give me one really tight group of edges in here which might start to show up in the overall uh, smoothness of the shoe. Um, so, yeah, let me see how these come together over here. Yeah, this is a, this is a tough one here. So let me let me just shift some stuff around in here just so I can get a good idea of what I want to do. Oops. So we have this face right in here that I need to get rid of. All right, I'm going to select these three I'm going to just merge to center like that and then I'm going to delete that edge loop and I think that's good that's all quads now and that is no longer an n-gon that is a four-sided polygon so there we go and then I'm just going to take this and just shift it inward here. And let's see what we get. So that feels a lot better to me. Um, let's see. Shift this up here. Just to thicken that. And then problem that I'm having here is just this angle here. I need this to be more sort of 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is take this, shift it this way. So you can see how that angle now is more, is closer to 90 degrees. I don't, I don't want that slope like that because that, that, that doesn't smooth out very well. It becomes way too soft. So just by shifting this this way and making sure that you're not selecting anything behind there so shift this this way and maybe this one as well and I'm gonna turn this on yeah it's fine and shift this over okay so let's see now now I'm getting what I like there Okay, and I just saw some bumpiness in here. Let's just pull this out a little bit. Much better. And let's pull this. We're not looking for perfection, but we're looking for, like as you can see right in there, I have some weird 
It's because there's a lot of geometry in there, but I actually kind of like that. I like how that looks because it, the, the shoe's been worn. It's not a perfectly brand new shoe. So having a little bit of that is not a problem for me. All right, let's, let's come over here. And let's deselect there. So I don't like how this sort of goes off that direction. So let's, let's move this here just so we get this nice shape here. Let's take these three points. And again, I'm just deselecting anything back there that I'm inadvertently selecting. Take these three. Take this, oops. Make sure you don't select anything back there. And then this probably just gonna move down here and maybe just move this up a little bit see what that gives us yeah I think I like that better um, if I wanted to I could sit here and tweak that but I, th I think that's good again this this is a shoe so a lot of this stuff is just kind of my OCD messing with me because we're never really going to have to see that shoe up close. But it's just for just for me. I mean, you can decide where you want to draw that line. I'm just going to touch some of these up just a little bit. And then move on. there we go okay so I think that looks good I think the shoe is really starting to take shape so up here I'm going to do the same thing I did on this side so we want these edges all the way around and again, I think I need to, I think I need to um, target well. And just click outside and make sure that nothing is selected. Then let's start target welding some of this. Okay. So, start selecting some of these edges all the way to here and uh, maybe run this there all the way around. Deselect that one. And I mean, you can see what I did here. So, let's. Now this, there's an actual shelf right here. And actually, my last uh, bevel stopped right there, so we're going to connect all these together. And that one. And let's do a bevel. What did I do? One and two segments. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Looks pretty nice. So again, just to get rid of that little slope there, I'm just going to move these in, <coughs> in a little bit. Okay, maybe take some of these and move them up. OK, 
See, I'm adding in the detail that I need, that I want. Just to make it look the way that I want. See what that does. Yeah. That's looking much better to me. Now the sort of this padded region right here, if I if we look at it smooth, you'll see that this one here is well defined. That's because when I modeled it, I actually put in uh, three edge loops that are really close together, and I was gonna do that for the rest of them, but I I kind of didn't like how this was having to taper down to that and then come out that way because you can see what I had to do here, which is not it's not the neatest looking geometry but yeah, yeah I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna leave it but this guy here could use a little bit extra de definition here so what I'm gonna do is hold down tab and then you can paint select these so I'm gonna do that then I'm going to control E to do an extrude I'm gonna switch to my scale tool I'm going to set my transform constraint to surface just so that I, it moves along the surface. And I'm just going to scale down just a little bit. And maybe not so much. Let's try that again. So something like that. Okay, then I'm going to take this and switch it to edge, just because these moved a little too much. I'm just going to slide. So what it is is they, they follow the edge. They slide along the edge. So this uh, transform constraints are really useful for this type of stuff. And these, and you can see on the mouse it says slide because that's what's happening I'm just sliding things along the edge now these ones over here could probably come up a little bit so just pull these up there we go okay so what that gives me so make sure you remember to turn that off when you're done with it Let's see how that see how that's more defined now Okay, so just a quick way to define that without getting a little too crazy with geometry. Um, and that should be good. Now, here where my other bevel had stopped, I need to now clean this up. And again, oh, I'm going to use my target weld tool. Oh, and I had a bunch of stuff selected, so again, deselect. I really hate that about the target weld tool. So that to that. Yeah, you can see my computer is starting to sort of chug a little bit just because it is older, but because I, you know, the scene is kind of heavy with that uh, 3D scan in here. So it's just sort of beating up my computer a little bit, but not a big deal. I have to delete history constantly just to just so that my computer cannot kill itself. Uh, let's put this here maybe. And let's see what I want to do with that. You know, I needed my camera. This is the perspective. Let's go in the attribute editor. See if we can there we go. Near clip plane. We just made it so that my camera can zoom in a lot closer than it was before. So what are we doing here? Uh, no, you know what? I can just target weld. I'm just going to take that one, weld it there. And then take this one and weld it there. Cleans right up. <clears throat> so let's go into object mode you can see I got a bunch of history here so alt shift D to get rid of the history and that should hopefully speed me up a little bit see how that looks 
looks pretty good I'm going to select all of this stuff let's move it up again trying to get that nice shelf same thing here yeah I just want to keep that nice and sharp sort of crisp Go to there and move this up. See what that looks like. And a little too sharp over here. That's because I moved it in a little too much. So let's pull this out. There we go. All right, so sharpen that up pretty nicely. Let's see, do I want to tighten this up here? I don't know. I might leave that for now. Um, looks pretty good, but we'll see later. Uh, now, where where the boot? meets up with the sole here I've made sure that there's an overlap now I can see a bit, a bit of a well, I don't know what's going on here let's fix that it's weird yeah this is weird over here um, I've tried to make sure that the sole and the actual shoe overlap so here it looks like when you, <clears throat> when you smooth it it comes through so I'm just going to pull this in a little bit further so that when I smooth this you got no gap okay so I'm just gonna go around looking for border edges making sure there are none and we're good all right let's let's make this other hole here so I made the first one let's make another one so I'm going to select faces around here so something like that then what you want to do is control E for extrude I'm going to switch to my scale tool and just like before I'm going to go in the tool settings and turn on surface transform constraint and scale it down okay the reason I do that is because if I don't do that so if I undo that and then I switch it off it's just gonna scale in the way that it wants from the center inward uh, and it's not gonna try to follow the actual surface so I'm gonna do it to surface and you can see that it just slides in along the surface trying to maintain that original surface there so once I've done that what I'm gonna do is then use a circularize to turn that into a circle get my move tool and again I can slide it you see it says slide so without the constraint it could go in and out but with the constraint surface it slides along the surface I can't go in and out it actually just slides along the surface so that's what I want I want to slide this cir uh, circle like this and then scale it in to something like that and then maybe move it and delete it so you can see now we've created a hole here we've hidden it inside of that little um, what do you call these things rivets I don't know little metal rings here okay um, now I have this sort of span here that I want to add some geometry to so I'm gonna get my multi cut tool hold down control cut here and maybe cut a second one right there okay and then this is where I can select my scan it's hidden right now but 
I can actually still make it a live surface even though it's hidden then I can select my geometry here make sure I'm in object mode I'm gonna delete my history again uh, then I'm gonna go in the modeling toolkit do a quad draw and wow that's a bright green let's go ahead and make it something different maybe an orange or a red I don't know something like that and then what I'm going to do is hold down shift and I'm going to use my relax tool and what that's going to do is it's going to constrain all this stuff to the actual 3d scan so that I'm not smoothing this stuff off of my scan it's just smoothing it along the surface of the scan and if you want we can bring back the scan not that you can really see it but you'll see that I'm, I'm staying on the surface I'm not just getting pulling these things in, in any direction they're actually staying um, constrained to the surface so and we're just gonna go until we have a nice little roundish shape okay if we want we can turn on our soft selection then hold down B and increase that and it's going to work on more points at once and I think that is good okay so turn off quad draw I'm going to hide my scan and turn off my life surface turn off okay so you can see the edges of that uh, where I was working so I'm just going to go ahead and soften my edges just to soften the normals now and that's what we have and we have our hole through there so you can see how I did that so I did that for all of these holes here let's let's come over here so again we're just going to select some polygons around this thing control E to um, extrude and then the other way you can do it is if when you get the extrude tool like this you can see that each axis has an arrow and a box if you click one of those boxes it brings in the center box so if you want to scale from the center um, the extrude tool scale kind of works like a surface constraint so you could do it that way and I think uh, you can't go any further so at this point I'm just going to switch to my regular scale tool and again making sure that we are on surface scale this in circularize and let's get my move tool and then maybe scale it down now you can see the orientation of that uh, lace ring there so what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the surface constraint because it won't let us rotate inward with with it still on so I'm just gonna try to center this then I'm gonna align my view and then use this outer ring here move this in so something like that let's see from the back here let's pull this inward try to center the circle maybe make it smaller let's delete it that is what we have get our multi-cut hold on control cut in a couple edge loops there now the this part here might not be as so easy to um, uh, use the, the scan because we have things like these laces that go across here my um, uh, quad draw is going to try to snap to those laces so I got to be careful with that so let's go back here panels and you know I should save so that I don't end up losing all this work I just did and give it a second <clears throat> so I'm going to make my scan live again 
Then I'm going to go into my quad draw. And at least for this lower section here, I can do, I can smooth it out. But as I start to get to where the laces are, things might not work out so well. So I just need to be careful. So we just want to ease the tension on these points. Okay, something like that. And I'm going to leave this section here and do that by hand. So turn off the live surface, hide this, and just pull this back in here. Okay. So smooth that. That looks okay. Um, the other tool that I use, which I have here, is a sculpt geometry tool. So where that is, is in the modeling tool set, surfaces, sculpt geometry tool. If we go in the options, I put it on relax. And all you got to do is just lightly, you want to just relax some of this geometry. You can relax or you can smooth, but I find that smooth tends to just really kill the detail on my geometry whereas relax doesn't so or at least not as much so there we go all right last hole oops just go around control e for extrude get to scale tool surface constraint slide it in circularize get the move tool just try to center this and you can do it from the back here is probably easier scale it down move it do what you got to do delete to make your hole cut in two edge loops and then again Show our scan, and again, we have a lace here, so we need to be careful. And make it live. Go back to our geometry, turn on quad draw, and start rel relaxing the edges. Okay. Just got to be careful there. Okay. Turn off live. Hide my scan here. And, you know, where it was snapping to the lace. Oh, I've got to make sure that I have my surface constraint off so that I can move this. So let's... Just make some. I'm always tweaking, so it is what it is. Um, let's go in. So, there we go. We got all the holes done. And, oh, you know, I'm going to slide this in here because it's been bugging me for a while. So, you know, tweak as you need. And I think my smooth operation may have... Yeah, I think it did mess up some of my geometry in here. So let's just tighten this back up. 
Not sure how I came to mess all this up down here. But no big deal. I'll fix it real quick. So I'm just tweaking my points, getting them to where I want. Okay. Yeah, somehow I must have painted on here without realizing it. Easy fix, though. Easy fix. Just tighten this back up so that it's not so soft. Okay, let's shift this over here. There we go. That looks better. Um, yeah, let's move this up. There we go. Okay, that was weird, but whatever, no biggie. Yeah, and somehow down here got messed up too. Anywhere else gets screwed up? Nope. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened here, but... Sometimes this type of stuff happens... So just, you know, deal with it, fix it. Fix it so you can move on. Wow. It's annoying, but um, you play with uh, Maya and other 3D software long enough and this type of stuff becomes kind of normal <laughs> I hate to say but it does this is highly complex software it's gonna do weird stuff sometimes it's just the way it is Actually, let's bring this here right And you know, you want to save often. I suppose I could have gone back to my previous version and just um, copied the polygons and brought them back here. I could have done that, I guess. But we are almost done. Yeah, that looks, oh, we need to bring this, 
just gonna scale it a little flatter and push it in okay so you run into problems fix them fix them and move on or go to an older file whatever you have to do just get it done so you can keep going There we go. Good. And save. And I hope that doesn't happen again. Okay, so that's where we are. We have the lace hold downs, we have these um, drainage holes done. We've tightened up the creases and there's another problem yeah I don't know what happened I must have run some command or something I don't know without realizing it <clears throat> but again only happened in a couple of places I'm not seeing it anywhere else so I'm not gonna worry too much about it it looks pretty good Okay, so this is where we are. So we're just going to keep working on it. And get to the actual tongue. I think before I get to the tongue, though, I'm going to extrude these sort of rounded sections here. At least extrude a bit of a lip on them just so that it curls in because right now it just kind of stops there I want it to sort of curl in there so I'm gonna do that um, so basically we're gonna be creating the surfaces that are not accessible from the scan so you know the scan is only good for so long when you start to want to do some of the interior surfaces obviously you can't get to those in the scan so you have to just make those yourself um, and uh, not worry too much about the scan so this is where your skills as an artist come into play to get what you what you want it to look like okay and then obviously the tongue is going to then slot in under there and then we'll get some laces on there and so on and so forth all right so this is where we are guys um, hope you like the video so far please don't be shy please comment uh, like subscribe that all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next video bye